of the second day here at DNC. It's about, it's about to get underway. Uh, but the big speech we're all sort of looking into uh, this evening is that of President Bill Clinton, one of the most anticipated uh, moments certainly of the week here. Tonight, uh, when he takes the podium, the former president will make history as he makes the case for his wife's uh, election to the White House. Uh, talking about how she will be uh, a change maker. Bill Clinton is uh, certainly no stranger to delivering major speeches uh, over the years at the DNC ever since really uh, 1988. Most of them well received, others not so much. Harry Truman would be so proud tonight that his party and Walter Mondale are leading the way in giving a great woman the opportunity to run for vice president. Michael Dukakis will never, never, never forget it. In closing, well, I ran for president this year for one reason and one reason only. I wanted to come back to this convention and finish that speech I started four years ago. Thank you for your nomination. I don't know if I can find a fancy way to say this, but I accept. She's been a great first lady. She's always been there for our family. And she'll always be there for the families of New York and America. Now, my hair is a little grayer. My wrinkles are a little deeper. You might got a panel standing by. We'll talk about what Bill Clinton needs to do tonight. Next. Let's talk Bill Clinton, past, present, uh, and future tonight, taking to the stage in prime time to vouch for his wife. Brad Woodhouse is with me, former communications director for the DNC. Jackie Kucinich is here, the Washington Bureau Chief for the Daily Beast, and David Gergen, CNN's senior political analyst and former advisor to Presidents Nixon, Ford, Reagan, Bill Clinton. So, um, you get to begin. Uh, 2012, Bill Clinton basically, like, ad-libbed half the speech. Sure did. What does he do tonight? Well, I think it's important to remember this, this I think, is his eighth convention speech. I don't think there's anybody in history that even FDR only had five. Uh, and he started out in 88, he gave a terrible speech. He almost got... Rousing applause. Yeah, in closing. In closing. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but the last time around, he gave the best convention speech. His capacity is to tell someone's story better than they can do it. He told Barack Obama's story better than Barack Obama could. And I think he tells Hillary Clinton's story better than she does. The question is, can he compress it? Yeah. Keep it down, because there's such a large campus he'd like to be on. There is it's such a big difference between what he'd like to say tonight and, and what, what he can, can say tonight. Um, this is his first mega speech as a spouse. Yeah, and, and this is why it's going to be so personal tonight. I'm sure we're going to hear the story about how the two of them met in the Yale Law Library, um, which we all know if you've covered the Clintons. Uh, and you're going to hear pieces of Hillary that make her a person rather than, and, and we'll get, to, I'm sure they'll get into the politician, but I think if this is going to be a speech to get to know her through the eyes of someone who knows her best. How does he respond if, I mean, I was just talking to a couple of, you know, great Bernie supporters, and they would say they would never boo a person, but you might hear some Bernie chants, and we saw how right. Bill Clinton responded to some protesters this past year, right. off script, not in a great way. How would he respond, do you think? Well, look, I think, I think if I had that opportunity, I would look at them and I would say, look, Bernie is with her. And we're with you, mm. and we're all in this together. President Clinton, are you watching? Right, right, right. right. He's hiding right now. Yeah, tell room. Say that we're, you know, we're all, we're all in this together. Now, it could be that if it's not uh, not very audible, you could do what uh, Elizabeth Warren did last night and ignore it. But I think there might be a way to bring them in. And, and But certainly the way he, he did it before, you wouldn't want to see him. I mean, I, either ignore it or you bring them in in a, in a nice, soft way. Because you, you don't want the story of his speech, the story he's trying to tell to be about Hillary Clinton, to be drowned out by a confrontation with a few people. David